Okay, good afternoon. Thank you and for joining us on our weekly Sunday webinar with Dr. Imran and myself, Ahava McLaughlin. Um, I, B is not here today, so we will miss you, B. Um, thank you, Dr. Imran, for having this uh, platform for us to learn every single week. Today's topic is on ADHD. So um, I will go first, and then Dr. Imran will talk after, after me, and he will give us wonderful protocols for ADHD, ADHD children uh, based off of their symptoms and protocols that he's developed. I'm going to be speaking off of a naturopathic perspective, just to add a little twist to things. And I am a traditional naturopath um, in South Florida. So thank you for joining us today. This is being recorded. If you have any questions, please put it in the chat. And um, uh, you can also uh, raise your hand if you if you also have a question that you, and, and we'll also give opportunity at the end to answer questions. Okay, so let's get started. Uh -huh. um, there's so much to speak on this subject. So uh, it was like, where do I condense it all? Uh, so first of all, I wanna give you some uh, recommendations uh, Dr. Amen, he has a clinic that specifically focuses on ADHD and he has a book out. Um, and that book, uh, I will get, I think it's called Heal. I have to look it up just a second, but it, it goes over the seven types of ADHD, um, and ADD and what, um, and what to look for. Let me see here Let me get, I'll write it in the chat. It is called Healing ADD by Dr. Daniel Amen, and let me get the chat up here for myself. So Dr. First of all, Daniel Amen. Oh, B, thank you. Okay, amazing. Okay, so B will be speaking after me, Dr. A Daniel Amen, and it is called Healing ADD. There is another book called Fire Child, Water Child. Um, and this is by uh, Stephen Scott Cowan and Cowan, and he's an MD. Okay. All right. So with that being said, um, I want to talk just a little bit about uh, forms and subtypes of ADHD. There are children um, or individuals with ADD that are hypersensitive. These are people who are creative and they have a mind a little bit with chaos and which enhances their creativity. Then we have um, those that are hyperactive and these can have a dissociative state and it's more seen in adults and they disconnect and they are often victims of trauma. Then we have um, ADD with anxiety and um, we also have ADD with um, depression, ADD with learning disabilities, ADD with agitation, ADD with substance abuse, um, dissociative state, oppositional disorder, antisocial features, borderline personality traits, and OCD. So as you can see here, we have a variety of different types and different causes and how this can happen. Okay. Okay, so the, the thing that AD, ADD needs um, are four types of um, neurotransmitters in the brain. And uh, one of them is acetylcholine, which is the most abundant. And then the other one is called GABA. And this is when you feel depressed, but you don't know why. And serotonin, which is associated with depression, and uh, this is more of, you know, why you're depressed, but this typically tends to the serotonin levels play a role primarily in females versus dopamine issues are associated with ADD, which governs the male. So again, serotonin governs the female and um, do uh, dopamine levels govern the male. So low, uh, low serotonin can be depression, uh, potential increases for depression. Low dopamine is potential, ADD potential uh, increases um, to do things that maybe one might not primarily do to look for attention and to satisfy those brain level uh, needing of satisfaction. 
Um, okay, now my next one. Okay, so serotonin relaxes us and it helps us remember that everything is going to be okay. It is calming and comforting and gives us uh, fulfillment. Uh, low levels associated with serotonin are depression, food cravings, and overgiving. And it is increased by serving others. So the more you serve people around you, the more serotonin you will develop. And that actually makes sense to me because I I'm, I have a very serving personality and I feel really good when I serve others. So this actually makes sense. Um, now, dopamine, on the other hand, is giving energy. It gives motivation, clarity and pleasure. And the low levels of dopamine are associated with ADD and addictions. Um, so behavior that stimulates production of dopamine is sports, action movies, um, alcohol, drugs, and unfortunately, pornography. So it's, it's estimated that 90% of males in prison have extremely low dopamine levels, and one in five boys are diagnosed with ADD, and one in five boys will also have low dopamine levels. So here's a really key thing to take away is that low dopamine, especially in boys, um, are going, you're going to see the ADD um, uh, characteristics and those that might be uh, seeking um, in behaviors that are um, are out of the out of the norm by uh, by society. Okay, and how do you increase dopamine? Is actually by protecting others. So it actually makes sense that males have the natural inclinability inc to um, protect others, while women have the natural uh, feelings to serve others. So here we see that you know how one can um, change from one to the other, and how that looks differently. Okay. All right. So with, and then I'm going to give some examples on what you could do to increase dopamine and in here in just a moment. Um, so yeah, so dopamine, it governs the male and it is central to the uh, nervous system. And it is it stimulates progesterone in females and testosterone in males. It can't cross the blood brain barrier. And um, it also is associated um, with six skills, which are mortar coordination, working memory, mental flexibility, processing speed, creativity, and space, time, and reasoning. Too much dopamine can give you schizophrenia, too little dopamine can give you Parkinson's. Okay. Symptoms of low, um, low dopamine, which is what we're dealing with here with ADD or ADHD is uh, decreased energy at home, declining interest and passion, impulsivity, forgetfulness, uh, addictions, boredom, the increased need for space or distance, being inconsistent, unresponsive to the needs of others, feeling worthless, not rested even when after adequate sleep and self-destructive thoughts. Okay. So some examples if to, to kind of tie it in together is if we're getting in the car and driving, instead of getting in the car and the driving, this person, when dopamine is low, you want to race the car. Instead of locking the door, you may buy guns or go practice shooting. Instead of exercising for an hour, you can't stop exercising. Instead of watching favorite sports team, you watch all the sports teams. Instead of being turned on by your spouse, you spend hours watching pornography. Instead of being satisfied, you have to have more. Instead of talking out the problem, you want to argue the problem. And instead of playing for fun, you play to win at all costs. And instead of being careful, you may take risks. So hopefully that makes sense there. So, all right, here's the part that you guys are looking uh, forward to from the naturopathic perspective is what, and I'm going to write it in the chat because I know I always get the question, um, is what um, what nu nutrients or herbs can su be supportive to ADHD? So I'm going to put here DLPA is one, tyrosine 
I'm going to write as I talk, B6, selenium, okay, uh, cysteine, alpha lipoic acid, and PEA, which is beta phen, hold on one second, phenyl, phenylethylamine, that's a mouthful. Okay. And foods that increase um, uh, dop dopamine production. So how do you get this more into your diet? So wild game is one, eggs, chocolate, beef, cheese, alcohol, although I don't know that I recommend that, um, legumes, fowl, oats, fish, blueberries, and whey protein. Okay, so here are some uh, whey protein, by the way, if you have a male child with ADHD, you might want to consider putting them on this. Um, usually most people, if people say don't, you know, no dairy, it's inflammatory. Yes, but whey is um, isolated. So usually most people who can't digest dairy, it's more of an, an enzyme or a lactose issue, not necessarily like a true allergy. Of course, if you have a true allergy to uh, any kind of dairy, obviously stay away from the whey. But otherwise, you might, you might consider that this could be very helpful uh, for them. Okay. All righty. So that are that is some um, of a, what I want to talk about from uh, this perspective. We can go into traditional Chinese medicine and look at the elements of wood and earth and fire and water. I believe the book that I gave you up above um, uh, by the MD uh, Fire, uh, what is it called? Fire Child, Water Child. Um, you can find some of that in there um, if you want to do some more research. Um, and it's all about supporting the brain. Um, so if you have a child that likes to argue, uh, it's important to try and not to argue back instead of reinforce positive um, positive traits and behaviors that they're doing because when you reinforce the negative, um, it, it basically is sending that <laughs> information to their brain where they're like, oh, I like how this feels and I'm gonna keep on doing it. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but that's kind of like what's going on here. Um, okay, so with Dr. Amen, he does have uh, the book that I mentioned, and he, on his website, he does have the seven types of ADHD according to his um, uh, diagnosis that he's done many scans, spec scans over the years, and he has noticed a trend. So I will just quickly go over them. So you have, there's seven types. So number one is classic ADD. And this is where you are inattentive, distractible, hyperactive, disorganized, and impulsive. And this is a dopamine deficiency, um, specifically blood flow decrease in the prefrontal cortex and the cerebellum. And the, uh, let's see here, what's good for this one is rhodiola, green tea, ginseng, and as well as amino acid L-tyrosine. Um, so that that's a general uh, recommendation there for your classic ADD. Number two is inattentive ADD. And this is um, short attention span, distractible, disorganized, procrastinates, and um, may daydream and be introverted. So this will impact both uh, more girls than it does uh, boys, and it's a, do a dopamine deficiency, and it is in the prefrontal cortex. It, what can you use to uh, supplement here naturally is um, amino acid, L-tyrosine, high protein, lower carbohydrate diet, and regular exercise. 
All right, number three is overfocus ADD. Now we have uh, trouble shifting attention, going from one thought to another, uh, task to task, getting stuck in the negative thoughts and patterns or behaviors. And this is a dopamine and serotonin issue. Um, and it is an overactivity in the anterior cingulate gyrus, which makes flexibility difficult. Supplements to use are L-tryptophan, 5-HTP, uh, Incital, and let's see, I think that's it for that. Yeah. Neurofeedback can be helpful here too. Temporal lobe ADD is... Um, Learning, me learning issues, memory issues, behavioral problems, quick to anger or aggression, and maybe some mild paranoia. And what this is an abnormality in the temporal lobe, decreased activity in the prefrontal cortex. And amino acid GABA is important here to calm the neural activity that inhibits the nerve cells from overfiring and firing erratically. Magnesium also helps with anxiety and irritability. And ginkgo will also help with learning and memory problems. Okay, number five is limbic ADD. And this is the core symptoms of the classic, as well as chronic low-level sadness. Um, not depression, but moodiness and low energy, frequent feelings of help and helplessness or excessive guilt and low self-esteem. And this is too much activity in the limbic part of the brain where the mood control center is. And we use uh, supplements for this type, which is um, DLPA, L-tyrosine, and SAM-E. So you could see here that uh, we were going through five of them already, and we could see that there's different ways to help support the individual depending on the type of ADD that they have. Okay. Uh, number six is ring of fire, which is um, sensitivity to noise, lights, touch, periods of mean and really intense behavior, unpredictable behavior, speaking fast, anxiety and fearfulness. Um, this is the ring of hyperactivity around the brain, which too much activity crosses the cerebral cortex and other areas. And here we need uh, neurotransmitters GABA and serotonin boosted through supplements such as GABA, 5-HTP and L-tyrosine. Last one is anxious ADD. And this is uh, basically when you're always anxious and being tense, having physical stress and symptoms like headaches and stomach aches, predicting the worst, um, high activity in the basal ganglia, um, and uh, which is opposite of most other types of ADD where there is low activity. So here there is high activity. And uh, the treatment for this is to increase dopamine levels uh, and GABA levels. Uh, ADD stimulants taken alone will make the, these more act anxious, so be careful with that. Um, begin with a range of calming supplements such as L-theanine, magnesium, and holy basil. Okay, so I hope I, that's a lot for me to write down, but you really could look this up on Dr. Amen's website on the seven types of ADHD. He gives us a, a, like a short uh, synopsis of what that looks like. And um, I think that's it from for me for today. I look forward to hearing from B. If anybody has any questions, um, please, now is your time. Or if you needed me to repeat something. I will look it up and, as B is talking and I'll put it in the chat, uh, okay. the website name. I was going to say that um, I you got a lot of good suggestions here and I'm very interested in it. Okay, so the only thing I is will I can't, pass it on I to B. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Imran, and I look forward to hearing what you have to say. B, um, go ahead and take it off. Hi, there was someone speaking just now. If you could go ahead and finish your question. That's okay. She can go on. All righty then. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. B. Coleman here. And as you know, I'm not a homeopath, but I have been learning about natural medicine on my own for almost 24 years now. Today, we'll be discussing ADHD as well. 
And this kind of hits home a little bit for myself because I have five grandkids and so far two of them, two boys, are quite busy and uh, not very well focused. Um, I've tried a couple of things, but so far I have not um, hit my target yet. Uh, one of my grandsons is from my oldest daughter. The other one is from my oldest son. And they're pretty hyper as well as like Bea, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Um, I can hear you. Some of the people here are not being heard for some reason. I don't know why. Um, anyone else that cannot hear me? Is there anyone else that cannot hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, Ahava, maybe you are having an issue and not hearing the people, maybe? Yeah, I think that my, I just figured it out. My volume was down. So I really hope everybody could hear me. <laughs> yes, um, we can hear you. Oh, okay, okay, good. I just didn't hear anybody. It was completely silent and I didn't realize that the volume was down. I apologize if I interrupted. I just wanted <laughs> to make sure that you started. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Anyway, um, I was talking about my two grandsons. Two of them um, are very, very um, busy, very hyper. I've tried a couple of things. I haven't hit the mark yet, so uh, still working on it. So the first protocol um, is one that I picked up in a different uh, homeopathic group uh, led by a woman named Katie. And she suggests three remedies. I have not tried these, by the way. These are taken separately, so they're like three different protocols, and they are in 30C, all, all three of them. <clears throat> so the first one is Platina, P-L-A-T-I-N-A. -A. Platina is for those who are seeking attention or recognition. Uh, the next one is Nux Vomica, 30C. Uh, this is for those with hyperactivity with some anger issues. And the last one is alumina, also 30C. This, uh, I think, is uh, for hyperactivity that is a result of my code word, jabbernations. Uh, again, all of these are taken separately. She also said that you could take them, you could use the three protocols at the same time. Of course, you would separate the remedies by at least 10 minutes. And the dosage is as follows. She said um, each of the remedies is to be taken once every other day for one month in 30C. If you find that it helped you, and uh, but it is not complete, then you move on to 200C for the following month. She, she didn't go on after that, but I assume that you would continue every month until you feel that you've reached a point where the ADD, uh, ADHD is no longer an issue. The second one, a second protocol, is uh, was posted by Harry uh, Gill in the BP Users Group. And it's interesting that uh, Ahava spoke about serotonin because this is, a, this is a very simple one. He said to take serotonin 30C twice a day. That's it. That's all. Um, I may try this one since uh, it's so simple um, and uh, see what that gets me. But for now, I am doing uh, the first line protocol of the Banerjee uh, protocol for ADHD. So there are three line protocols. The first one is Athusa Sin, A-E-T-H-U-S-A, Sin, C-Y-N. That's the short word. Athusa Sin, 200C. Mother, why are you running? I'm sorry? Kiran? Oh, sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, so um, where was I? <laughs> the first line protocol, Athusa Sin, 200 every third day. 
And the second part of that taken separately is Stramonium 6C twice a day. And we just started my, one of my grandsons on that um, less than a week ago. I'm going to say he's been on it about four, four days, maybe. Um, and Ahava, just so you know, um, I'll explain this personality. And then maybe later on, after we get off, you can let me know where he falls. This grandson of mine is, is very kind hearted. He's very tender hearted. Uh, very good spirited, uh, gets very hyper once he's like when his other cousins are around, very, very hyper. And when he's learning, he's now being homeschooled, he is in constant motion. The hands, the feet, the torso, he's climbing chairs at the same time. Uh, I can't imagine that he can possibly be learning with all that movement going around, going on. Anyway, so the second line protocol for the Banerjee protocol. And I believe I had tried this one on him, uh, both my grandsons and, and uh, to no avail. And that was Hyosciamus, H-Y-O-S-C-Y-A-M-U-S. Hyosciamus Niger, N-I-G-E-R, 6 C. And that is twice a day. And then separately, you also take Calc Foss, 3x twice a day. That is the second line protocol. The third line protocol is Lachesis mutus, L-A-C-H-E-S-I-S-M-U-T-U-S. -S -S that one is once every other day. And the other part of the third line protocol taken separately is again, Hyosciamus niger, 6 c twice a day. Uh, I have a, a, a few theories, I guess, about other things that can be done to also help um, uh, children with ADHD. I would look at um, parasite cleanses, uh, heavy metal detoxes, and um, adjusting the, the acidity of the stomach. Uh, so if the gut is bad, it would account for um, the existence of these problems in the first place. And so with that, that's all I have for today. Um, I will, if anyone wants to know how it's going, uh, I don't know, in about a month, uh, hit me up uh, on Messenger and ask me how my grandson is doing, and I will let you know. Uh, the other grandson I only get once a week, so he's harder to work on. Uh, so I, I try to send him remedies through uh, my machine. Um, for jabbernation issues, I would say that we might want to be looking into detoxing from the jabbernations with aluminum. Um, that might be uh, another avenue to approach this from. Um, does anyone have any questions? B, yes, I do. Um, just really quick, Lachesis in the third line protocol, what was the actual um, potency? Oh, I'm sorry, I missed that. That is 200 C. Thank you. And that was one time every other day, correct? Yes, correct. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, if there are no other questions, I will now pass you on. What, to what potency was the aluminum? Aluminum. Aluminum, I would do aluminum in, in, a, in a CM. I tend to address or dose aggressively. I also am of, I, and I do it, often, where I will do CMs um, two and three times a day for several weeks or months. Um, but I use muscle testing. So you kind of have to play that by ear. Hopefully, you know how to muscle test. And if you don't, then um, message me and I will send you some stuff on uh, how you can learn. Thank you, B. Um, for your grandson, um, the sitting, not being able to sit still, um, I would try and uh, look into the nervous system uh, to calming that down. Um, and um, I like oat seed tincture. I find that that's really nice for the nervous system. Oat seed? A-O-A-T? 
Yeah, oat seed tincture. And it helps um it's the tops of the grains of the of the oat. Um uh -huh and um with the seeds and then they they turn it into a tincture so it, i actually use this one a lot uh post like post covid um um to balance out the nervous system when it, it gets interrupted so um i don't know you could try it and see just start with low doses of course and then see see how it how it goes okay i will note that down thank you so much um Oat seed. Is that correct? Someone was asking on the chat. How much of how much of the tincture do you take, Ahava? Uh, I mean, and for how long or how, um, any, anything you want? I mean, to I would you know I when you look at the dosing of a. Um, when you look at the dosing of anything, uh, if it's, it's usually an adult dosage, so then you take, if it's, you know, like a 10 year old, 12 year old, 13 year old, you know, you might take half of it. Right. And if it's younger, you might do a third of the dose. So just start off with one dose and see how they respond, see how their digestive system responds, how they respond. And then you can muscle test and up it from there, you know, to see, do you need to do it one time a day, twice a day, three times a day? Thanks. Thank you, Ahava. Um, if there are no more questions, uh, then I will hand off to Dr. Imran. Dr. Imran, are you on board? Yes, thank you very much. Bismillah ar Rahman. Ar Good afternoon, everyone. Here is Dr. Imran from Pakistan. So today we talk about a ADHD topic. So everyone hear me clearly? Yes, you're coming through loud and clear. Okay, thank you. So what is the, what is ADHD? ADHD is a brain-based disorder that affects billions of children. It is related to functioning and behavior skills, a combination of symptoms like difficulty in hyperactivity and impulsive behavior are of, often Indicative of ADHD, diagnosing ADHD is complex process because this classical behavior symptoms of the same are often part of a child normal development. In many children who are not severely affected or only particularly fit, the evolution for ADHD the symptoms may overlap with natural personality traits. So what are the subtypes of ADHD? There are three subtypes of ADHD. Predominantly hyperactive, impulsive, predominantly intentive, and a combination of these two. Children with the predominantly hyperactive, impulsive, type of ADHD displays symptoms of hyperactivity and feels the need to move. They may also have difficulty controlling their impulses. They usually do not have much trouble paying attention. Children with the predominantly in Tentative type of DHD, ADHD have difficulty paying attention and are easily distracted, but do not have much trouble with hyperactivity. Children with the combination of the type of ADHD mentioned 
above tend to have a lot of problem with both hyperactivity and intentions. What are the cause of ADHD? As parent, they for most concern on finding your child with ADHD symptoms is to go on a guilt trip. Where did I go wrong? But take hard the genesis of ADHD in your child is hardly comment on your in such causing disorder as there are several factors that trigger ADHD through Figures for ADHD can be broadly classified into the following categories. It is in the genes. Like several other behavior disorders, the genes can also be blamed for the development of ADHD is in the child. If there is a family history of ADHD, say a grandparent, parent, sibling, uncle or aunt has been affiliated by the disorder. There is a four to five times greater chance for a child to con contract it. Another genetic factor that can be responsible for ADHD is a thinner brain tissue in the brain plant linked uh, attention faculties. The cause can, however, disappear. Over the year of brain tissues grow to have a normal thickness. Research showed that the growth of brain tissues in children with ADHD is around three years behind that of non-ADHD kids, but they can outgrow this handicap over the years. Didactic. There are many theories about the role of food in such behavior disorders as there are kinds of symptoms. Some specialists hold food responsible for triggering ADHD. Some blame it on the lack of omega-3 fatty acids, while others feel that this condition is caused by refined sugar while the link between ADHD and refined sugar has not been so strongly substrained. The role of omega-3 fatty acids have a more solid hacking backing as these are considered important for the growth of the brain. That is the reason that fish oil supplements are sometimes suggest to cure ADHD symptoms and boost brain power. Environment explains it. Children whose mother consumes cigarettes, alcohol, or consume various drugs during pregnancy have a higher susceptibility to developing ADHD nicotine contained Cigarette it's, is said to cause a deficiency of oxygen in the worm. Even expert to lead consider to hygienic heightened the risk inquiries, the disorder environmental toxin like lead usually considered to building paints are believed to be trigger people who reside in old construction that has used old lead based paint may this be a higher risk of contracting symptoms of ADHD. Blame it on the brain. Certain 
malformation of the brain are believed to trigger symptoms of ADHD for intense and abnormality in the perform cortex that plays a role in controlling excessive function can lead to this disorder. The exhaustive functions unable a person to exercise self restraint it if the excessive function of the brain are affected, it is likely to manifest itself in the symptoms of ADHD like hyperactivity. Studies have also indicated a connection between dopamine level in the brain and the development of ADHD. It is a incidence being found to be higher in people with smaller level of dopamine. What are the symptoms of ADHD? The symptoms of ADHD are divided into two categories. The first one is related to intention and the second one is related to hyperactivity. The symptoms of ADHD also vary in terms of intensity, rigging, from mild to moderate to serve. The symptoms show by a child with intention include difficulty to functioning attentions, easily distractions, avoidance of tasks needing attention, frequently losing things like pencils and toys, misplacing their belongings, and a problem with following instructions. The symptoms show by a child with hyperactivity include difficulty with sitting still in school or while doing homework, running around, talking non-stop, interrupting other mid-conversations, constant movement, movement displaying impotence while waiting for a turn, tapping of hands or feet and difficulty in doing tasks quickly and calmly. So now I want to share some uh, homeopathic remedies which we are commonly used So first remedy is causticum. Causticum, C-A-U-S-T-I-C-U-M. Causticum is suggest when emotional a emotional streaming twitching of the fecal muscles or problem in the vocal cords. So we are used causticum in 30C and in 200C. Second remedy is staphysagria. S-T-A-P-H-Y-S-A-G-R-I-A. Can aid is reducing social anxiety, which often causes strengthening. The stremor only appear while interrupting with strangers or authority figures. So we are used this remedy, staphysagria, in... 30C and in 200C according to the patient condition. So third remedy is Nux Vomica. Nux Vomica is the medicine to use with streamering is a result of extreme stress or overwork. So we are use this remedy in 30C and 200C according to the patient condition. So next remedy is Econite. Econite fright or shock often causes speech lessness. So we are use Econite in 30C 
and 200 C according to the patient condition. So next remedy is Lexis. L-A-C-H-E-S-I-S, -E Lexis. Is an effective remedy when the patient stutters over specific letters. So we are used this remedy in 30 C and 200 C. Next remedy is gelsemium. Gelsemium is used to treat severe viral infection when the patient complains of a heavy tongue and lack of journal coordinations. So we are used gelsemium in 30 C and 200 C according to the patient condition. So next remedy is Satramonium. Satramonium can be used when the stimulating in violent and the person disorder his, his facial muscles heavily in other to be able to speak. So satramonium we are used in 30 C and 200 C. Next remedy is lycopodium can be used for as well as depression, memory weakness and sleep problems. This is especially helpful in the patient struggles with the last few words of a sentence. So we are used this remedy in 30 C and in 200 C. So next remedy is Spigelia. Spigelia, S-P-I-G-E-L-I-A. Spigelia is, is for a mild stutter at a beginning of a sentence often followed by in this in disturbed speech. So we are used Spigelia in 30 C and in 200 C according to the patient condition. So next remedy is Veratrum album. V-E-R-A-T-R-U-M. A-L-B-U-M. Veratrum album is a homeopathic treatment for ADHD used to control impulsive behavior along with the desire to cut or treat things and excessive shirking. So we are used this remedy, Veratrum album in 30C and 200C and 1M according to the patient condition. Next remedy is Tarantola Hispania. Tarantola Hispania. Tarantola is used when a child is hyperactive with marked restlessness and impatience. So we are used Tarantola Hispania in 30C and 200C and 1M according to the patient condition. Next remedy is tuberculinum. Next remedy is tuberculinum. Tuberculinum we are used to control hyperactivity in children with ADHD. So we are used uh, tuberculinum in 200C and in 1M according to the patient condition. Tuberculinum is indicated when a child displays hyperactivity along with an implies to run away use of remedy. Tuberculinum is suggested when there are fits of anger outburst with screaming and a tendency to use abusive language 
they may to further combine with destructive behavior and throwing things at others. So tuberculinum we are used in 200 C and in 1 M according to the patient condition. Dr. Imran, is that tuberculinum yeah. cotch or bovine or which one? Uh, bovine. Okay, great. Thank you. Welcome. So next remedy is chamomile. Next remedy is chamomile. C-H-A-M-O-M-I-L-L-A. Chamomile. Chamomile, the child may also be specific and snappish snappish and irritable irritable boy uh, irritable patient we are used chamomile in 30 c and in 200 C according to the patient condition. So next remedy is hyosimus. Hyosimus used in children who present with manic or sexualized symptoms. Homeopathy used in ADHD where symptoms are across to spectrum, hyperactive to complete withdrawal completely based on symptoms. Hyosemis we are used in 30 C and in 200 C according to the patient condition. So next I talk about some remedies for uh, development delay species. So first remedy is calcarea carb. Calcarea carb is one of the top grade remedy for developmental delay. I have seen excellent results to children with delay development after they were given calcarea carb. This remedy is more suitable for children having a fatty and fair and flabby. Children who need calcarea cow are slow in learning to walk and have slow. They tend to be obese with a big head and large belly. The skin often looks pale and chalky in children suggest calcarea cow, one of the popular remedy for developmental delay. They are other symptoms as well. The children are sluggish, dull, and especially the interior one may also show delay closer in children who will respond well to this remedy. Another particle symptom is the tendency to perspire excessively mainly on the scalp, neck, and chest. So we are used calcarea carb in 30 C and 200 C and 1 M according to the patient condition. Next remedy is calcarea fast. Top rated remedy for developmental delay. Natural remedy calcarea fast is among the best medicine for developmental and extremely useful in treating children with slow mental and physical growth. I have seen children make up for the delay in reaching their developmental milestone amazingly fast. 
with the help of this medicine, calcarea fast, the majority effective in delicate skin with noticeably slow progress, these children are late in learning to walk and talk. The teeth develop slowly and the positor for natal may be slow to close. The skull is soft, thin and brittle in such intense and other key symptoms to look out for before Deciding on these remedy, the pay, the digestive system is also weak in such cases where calcarea fast work as the most suitable among medicine for developmental delay. The child that needs calcarea fast want to be nursed all the time. Colic and vomiting post feeding are also observed. The child may suffer chronic diarrhea with watery, offensive, and greenish stool. So we are used calcarea fast in 3x, calcarea fast in 6x, calcarea fast 30c, calcarea fast 200c, and calcarea fast 1m according to the patient condition. So next remedy is Brita Car. Brata car for developmental delay due to trauma or vaccination. Brata car is also one of the known remedy for developmental delay that has made a mark in my in, in my clinical practice. I have seen children response. Well, it the remedy shows excellent result in children who are draw fish both mentally and physically. These children often appear dull-minded and are slow learners where speech and walking are concerned. Bhattakarp is one of the most effective remedy for developmental delay to use in such cases and has shown remarkable result where children shows a marked fear of stranger as well. Bhattakarp is also majority useful when the child shows Either developmental after trauma or vaccination, perfuse sweet with offensive odor, mainly on the feet, may be present along with the above mentioned symptom. In such intense of developmental delay, Bratagar is also one of the most preferred remedies for developmental delay in children who suffer from chronic ton tonsillitis attack. So we are used Bratacarb in 3X, Bratacarb in 6S, Bratacarb in 6C, 12C, 30C, 200C, and 1M according to the patient condition. Next remedy is tuberculinum. Tuberculinum works well in children who are weak, emicated, and mentally de deficient due to rather development, like in all developmental delay cases. They learn to speak late, however, they have tendency to catch a cold and suffer from recurrent upper respiratory tract infection, excessive sweating, especially at night, may be noticed. In children where tuberculinum will be ideal option. So we are used tuberculinum in 200 C and in 1 M according to the patient condition. Next remedy is carcinosin. Next remedy is carcinosin. Carcinosin is equally effective in children with arrested growth. A child who needs carcinosin would have very low immunity and they suffer from recurrent severe infection. Children in such cases of developmental delay have difficulty in falling asleep. Therefore, where the child need to be uh, carried around or rock to sleep or where to specifically sleeps on the abdomen, Carcinosin is the most effective remedy to give. Carcinosin is also the remedy for 
autism disease in children with developed delays such cases show marked hyperactivity so we are use this remedy in 200c and in 1m according to the patient condition next remedy is silesia next remedy is silesia s i l i c e a silesia Silesia is one of the most effective remedy for developmental delay that works best in children with a large head and the thin legs. The stutters are found are slow to close in these children. Other key constitutional features that prominent use of silesia are amication def defective. Distant abdomen, delay in learning to talk and walk in addition to such warm in may also be present in children who are suggest slacia. We are used slacia in in 6x, slacia in 12x, slacia in 30c and in 200c according to the patient condition. So next remedy is Athusa, A-E-T-H-U-S-A, -E Athusa. Athusa for developmental delay majority recommended in infants who are unable to hold their head. These children are highly restless and cry too much and other guiding symptoms for use of Athusa as the best among remedy for developmental delay in the child inability to digest milk the child is intolerant to milk and may vomit milk it fit weakness exhaustion and sleepless may result these children may also get diarrhea after taking milk so we are used this remedy in 30c and in 200c according to the patient condition So now I want to share a protocol which I use in my clinical practice. So first remedy is Anacardium 200C. Hyosam is 200C. Anacardium 200C and Hyosam is 200C. So these two remedies use separately every third day one dose. And Econide 30C, Arsenic Album 30C, Agnesia Amara 30C and Caliphas 30C mix together these three remedies and use three times a day. Could you please repeat that? I think that you named four remedies and then you said that you mix the three remedies. Would you repeat the four remedies again? Four MDs, yes, mix four MDs. They are aconite, aconite 30C, arsenic album 30C, agnesia amara 30C, and caliphas 30C. Mix together these four MDs and take three times a day. Other one is first MD is Anacardium 200C and second one is Hyosemis 200C. And did you say use those separately every other day? 
every third day one dose. Oh, every third day. Okay. So anyone have a question about this topic? Which tuberculinum was it again? On number nine, you said tuberculinum. Is that bovine also? Yes. Dr. Imran, I have a question on lycopodium. Um, I just want to make sure I understood what you use it for. You said uh, something about sentence structure. Actually, any clarification on both lycopodium and spigella, spigelia? Sorry, lycopodium? Yeah. Lycopodium we are used where children uh, where children show difficulty with during reading and conversation. They also tend to be confused and display territs of low self-confidence. What were the potencies for lycopodium? Lycopodium 30C and 200C. But okay. I mostly use in 30C and in 200C. Um, you did you did I hear incorrectly? You said something about messing up words of a, a sentence or three words of a sentence. I don't know why I thought I heard something like that. One second, I write. Or was it hard to finish the sentence? Was that what it was? Say again. Was it hard to finish a sentence? They're For lycopodium? Talking, they're talking about lycopodium. If, if one of the characteristics is that it's hard to finish a sentence. Yes. Okay, thank you. And the next one you and mentioned... low self-confidence. And also low self-confidence. Confused okay. and low low uh, self-confidence what if a child ha um it has hard like hard to read and speaks a little backwards and whatnot but doesn't necessarily have low self-confidence would you still consider this remedy uh yes also and we need to add uh, anacardium in 30c with lycopodium daily Lycopodium 30C and anacardium. Would you use that daily is my question? Yes, daily. Thank uh, you. Once a day. Okay. Better give a uh, lycopodium in the morning and anacardium in the evening. Thank you. And to clarify uh, the next one, spigelia for disturbed speech. What is that? What would be the difference there? One second. Yeah, for disturbed speech. At the beginning of a sentence, often followed by in disturbed speech. Spigelia is for a male stutter at the beginning of a, of a sentence, often followed by in disturbed speech. Okay, thank you. And um, question from the chat. I just want, I answered someone, but I wanna make sure that that's what you meant. 
um, in the protocol that you gave with anacardium um, she and uh, hy hyoscyamus, um, she wants to know, do we use those on the same day? Um, no, alternative day, alternative day. Okay, so anacardium on day one, and let's say the hyosamus on day two, and then you repeat every third day one dose. No, listen, listen, listen just a minute. Okay. First day, hyosamus. Uh, sorry, first day, anacardium, then three days gap, and then use uh, hyosamus, mm, then again, okay. three days gap, and use anacardium and hyosamus. Got okay, it. So you're alternating those two remedies with each other every third day. Yes, correct. And other four remedies mixed together and use three times a day. Earlier, you mentioned stramonium. Was it stramonium that you were talking about? The tramonium we are used for delay speech. Just a minute. Can you spell it? S T R A M O N I U M. Okay, stramonium. Okay, thank you. Yes. What was the one you mentioned after the um, Baratrum album? You mentioned another one for restlessness and impatience. Tarantula hispanica. Yes. Tarantula, okay. Tarantula. Tarantula? Yes, it's kind of like tarantula. Oh, okay. Tarantula. Okay, thanks. But, uh, but remember two type of tarantula. I mentioned tarantula spinia. So anyone have another question? Okay, I want to say thanks to everyone. So next Sunday, same time, we meet again here uh, with new topic. And I want to say thanks to everyone. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Imran. Okay, always welcome. God bless you all.